Hi everyone, welcome back. In this chapter, we are going to cover different kind of clock gating circuits used in VLSI hardware design. So let's get started. So here you can see that we have a flip flop circuit and the signal waveform for this flip flop is this one. So if we, we carefully analyze these waveforms, we can see that the data, the flip flop input data is changing at two places here and here. So if we do not have these two clock cycles present in our clock signal or in other words, if we do not apply these two clock cycles to our flip flop, is our flip flop output is going to change and the answer is no. Without applying these two clock cycles to the flip flop, our output of the flip flop is not going to change. That means these two clock cycles are basically getting wasted with respect to the flip flop behavior. Now let's see one another scenario. So again, this is a flip flop circuit with an input max. So here you can see that whenever the enable signal is high, the data, the new data will be passed to the flip flop input signal. And whenever the enable signal is low, the same data which is present at the output will be going as input to the flip flop. So here again, if you see the waveform, the new data is basically toggling at this place and at this place. So again, if we do not apply these two clock cycles to the flip flop, our flip flop output is not going to change. So these two clock cycles are basically getting wasted with respect to flip flop behavior because they are not going to make any change in the flip flop output. So the example could be some part of the SOC which are always not functioning. And another example could be some configuration registers where we do not need to update the config configuration registers frequently and we have to do the configurations once in a while. So if these kind of circuits are present in our design, then we definitely have few clock cycles where the circuit behavior is not changing or if we apply those clock cycles, the circuit output is going to be the same. So basically from circuit perspective, those clock cycles are basically getting wasted. So now what is the problem if we apply these extra clock, clock cycles to the circuit? So from the functionality behavior of the circuit, there is no change, but the other consequences is related to the power. So if we see the basic functionality of the flip flop at every, for example, let's assume this is a rising edge flip flop. So at every rising edge of the clock, this flip flop is sampling the input data and it's propagating the data at the output. So during this processing, the flip flop consumes lots of power in terms of charging and discharging of its internal nodes and that component of power is nothing but dynamic power. So how we can avoid these extra clock cycles when the flip flop output is not going to change. So as I said, the extra clock cycles which are getting applied to the flip flop are causing nothing but dynamic power consumption. And the derivation of dynamic power consumption and how it is calculated we have covered in our previous episode. I will provide the link of that episode in the description section of this chapter and I would recommend you to first go through that episode so that you would be able to understand each and every aspect of power in VLSI CMO circuits. And that would really helpful for you to understand every concept in this chapter. In the previous chapter, we derived that the dynamic power is nothing but product of activity factor, the load capacitance, the voltage, supply voltage and the frequency at which the circuit is operating. So if you see here, if we can, if we can somehow remove these extra clock cycles, this, the activity of this flip flop is going to be reduced. For example, at every clock cycle, at every clock cycles, if we are sampling this data and we, if we are processing this input data, that means our activity factor is going to be one. At every clock cycles, we are processing the input data. If we do not process this input data at every clock cycles, that means our activity of this circuit is going to be less. So in order to make the activity less, when the circuit behavior is going to be same, we can basically remove these extra clock cycles from our clock signal. So the clock cycles which we basically going to apply to the flip flop are basically this clock cycle and then this clock cycle. And these clock cycles we can somehow get then our activity of this circuit is going to be reduced. So this is the motivation behind developing the clock getting circuits to reduce the activity factor of 
circuit. So now let's see what all kind of clock gating circuits are available to get a clock. So first we are going to study the AND gate based clock gating circuit. So here this is our design flip flop, the functional flip flop and instead of applying the clock directly, directly to the flip flop, we have incorporated one AND gate in this part. And here the behavior of the enable signal is nothing but whenever the enable signal is high, the flip flop is supposed to sample the input data. That means the clock should be available to the flip flop. So if we if if we use an AND gate, then we can say that whenever the input is one, the clock signal will be passed. So if we analyze these waveforms, this is our clock signal and this is our enable signal. So whenever the enable signal is going high, that means our clock signal basically will be passing during the time the enable signal is high. So whenever the clock signal is low, we will not have any clock signals at the output of the AND gate. Now let's see what is the issue with this AND gate based clock gating circuit. So if our enable signal toggling is happening like this, that means whenever the clock signal is low, if our enable signal is toggling, then there is no problem at the gated output and the gated output is basically coming as a perfect clock signal. But if the enable signal toggling happens during the time when clock signal is high, so if the enable signal toggles here, it might cause glitches in the output gated clock. Let's see this scenario. So here if you see the enable clock signal is basically toggling when the clock signal is high. That means our gated output is coming like this. And here are the glitches present in the clock signal. So the clock signal should be a perfect square wave. There should not be any kind of glitches in the clock signal. If we use an AND gate based clock gating circuits, we have to make sure that our enable signal is toggling only when the clock signal is low. So guys, how can we make sure that? What extra logic we can add in this circuit so that our enable signal only changes when the clock signal is low. So guys, you can just pause this video for one minute and you can think about any kind of circuits which will make sure that our enable signal only toggles when the clock signal is low. Please write down the solution in the comment section. Otherwise, I will go ahead and will provide the solution here. So now let's see the solution. So if we launch our enable signal from a negative edge clock signal flip flow, it will ensure that our enable signal only changes during the time when clock signal is low. So this is our clock signal and this flip flop is negative edge sensitive flip flop. So it will sample the enable signals at this clock edge only. That means whenever the whenever we have our clock signal high, this flip flop is not going to sample the enable signal and that will ensure that our enable signal is never going to change during this time. It will only change at this point and at this point. That means either it will here change like this or it will change like this. It will never change when the clock signal is high. Now let's see the another clock gating circuit which is based on OR gate. So here we have one OR gate which is sitting in the clock path circuit and we have one enable bar signal. So if you see the waveform here, whenever our enable bar, this is the enable here is basically active low signal. So whenever enable bar is low, OR gate will pass the clock signal. Otherwise, it will otherwise the OR gate will always have high signal at the output. So whenever the enable signal is toggling like this, that means the whenever the when that means the enable signal toggles when the clock signal is high. If the enable signal toggles in this way, we will always get a perfect clock signal at the output. But what happens if the enable signal toggles when the clock signal is low? So if the clock signal is low, and in that time, if our enable signal toggles, it will create some kind of glitches in the output gated clock. Let's see this scenario. When the enable bar, this is nothing but enable bar. The enable bar signal basically toggling when the clock signal is low. So if it toggles when the clock signal is low, we will get this glitch in the output waveform. So again, guys, let's think how we can 
modify this circuit so that our enable enable bar signal only toggles when the clock signal is high so again let's pause this video for one minute and think of any kind of solutions if you can if you are able to think any solution please write down in the comment sections otherwise i will go ahead and provide the solution so now let's see the solution for this problem so here if we introduce a positive edge flip flop it will make sure that our enable signal only changes when the clock signal is high so if we have this clock signal and this is our positive edge flip flop so the enable signal so so this flip flop so this flip flop positive edge flip flop is basically going to sample our enable signal at this point or at this point so during this time when the clock signal is low our enable signal is never going to be change it will be either 1 or 0 as per the sampled value at this point so this will ensure that there are no glitches in our gated clock signal now let's guys few points to summarize here the AND gate or we instead of AND gate we can also use a NAND gate so the AND gate or NAND gate based clock gating is referred as active high clock gating because here the clock will be passed from the gator when the enable signal is high so this is called active high clock gating circuit because here we have the AND gate so if we have a AND gate our clock signal if this is our clock signal and this is our enable signal then our clock signal will pass whenever the enable signal is high so this is called basically an active high clock gating circuit and if we have a OR gate or NOR gate based clock gating it is referred as active low clock gating circuit and clock gating is an efficient way as discussed to save the dynamic power consumption in a design now guys till now we discussed two clock gate gating circuits which are based on AND gate and OR gate and also to in order to avoid any kind of glitches we incorporated some flip flops so now what is the problem with flip flop based clock gating circuits basically whatever two circuits we have discussed with where this one and this one what is the problem with these two circuits so the problem is in terms of area so if we incorporate one flip flop which has size equal to two of latches the area size is the flip flop area size is equal to two latches so definitely the area of the design is going to be more now even though these two circuits are to save the dynamic power and they are definitely going to save the dynamic power because they are going to reduce the activity factor of our flip flop by getting the clock signal but since some extra hardware is there that will definitely consume more power for example we have saved 100 units of power but with extra hardware some 10 units of power is going to be more so ultimately we are going to save 90 units of power now the third important drawback with these circuits is nothing but with respect to timing so if we take example of this circuit here we have introduced one negative as triggered flip flop so if suppose this enable signal is launched by a positive edge triggered flip flop so if this enable signal is coming from a positive edge triggered flip flop this signal is basically getting captured at the negative edge of the capture flip flop which is nothing but this flip flop so let's assume that we have this clock signal which is nothing but the launch edge clock signal and the same clock signal is coming here but this flip flop is negative edge triggered flip flop so if we assume that our capture clock is also same as the launch edge launch clock edge so if the enable signal is launched at this point because of this negative as triggered flip flop the data will be captured at this point negative h that means our setup jack which is ideally with both positive edge flip flops is going to happen at this point is basically shifting at this point that means this is kind kind of becoming a half cycle path where now the setup requirement has to be met within t by 2 time period so it has made the setup timing requirement to be met even harder so this is the important drawback in this circuit due to the half cycle path which is coming because of this negative as triggered flip flow and which is making our setup time 
to be meet harder. So guys, how can we mitigate this problem of timing? So this timing problem can be solved by using a latch based clock gating circuit also called integrated clock gating circuit. So simply if we replace the negative edge triggered flip flop with, in, with a negative level sensitive latch our problem of timing as well as these other two problems will also solve in some extent because the power will also reduced because the power consumed by a latch is always going to be less than a flip flop because a flip flop is made of two latches. So in area also one latch area is less than two latch area. So definitely with respect to area and power also the latch based clock getting circuit is going to be more efficient and as well as it is going to solve the most important problem which is nothing but timing problem. So this negative level sensitive latch our problem of timing is going to be solved. This latch is basically not going to make our timing requirement to be meet harder but instead it is going to help in meeting that timing. So there is a concept of time borrowing if a particular path is not meeting our timing requirement we can borrow some time from the next cycle by introducing some latch based design. So we will study the time borrowing concept in some of the STA chapter but remember that with this introduced latch our timing requirement will also get solved. So most ASIC library vendors now supply a standard ICG cell where the internal timing of the cell has already been sorted out and it is just safe to instantiate it in our design. So guys I hope the different kind of clock gating circuits are clear. If you have any doubts please write down in the comment section. Also if you like this video please subscribe this channel and do not forget to press the bell icon so that you would get notified as soon as I upload the next video. Thank you very much.